Hello, hello, hello. Good evening and shalom to you all. I hope you are all happy, healthy, and well, and blessed. Um, today I am back to share a slow and deliberate reading of, yeah, guilty again, mea culpa, one of my favorite readings, Psalm chapter 19, Psalm chapter 19, verses 8 through 11, verses 8 through 11. And without further ado, Shalom lechem, anashim tovim, uvruchim habaim, la'arutz hakatan sheli. Welcome to my little channel, Hayom. Today, I want to offer um, a few verses uh, that speaks specifically to the Torah, the Torah of Adonai. Um, I want to humbly ask that if my offerings on uh, my channel is a blessing to you in any type of way, please prayerfully consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. I have discovered that there are a lot of people who watch my channel, but I have not yet set the hook, and they haven't hit the button yet. Um, so I will read through uh, at a moderate pace, uh, come back at a slow pace, and then we'll do translation and maybe a couple of pointers along the way. So first off, a little housekeeping. As you can see, the pointer is pointing toward uh, a compound phrase, Torat Yehovah, or Torat Adonai, Torat Hashem, Torat Shema, however you want to uh, pronounce according to your conviction and to your study. But it's pointing to a compound phrase, Torat Adonai, the instructions of Adonai. Torah, as you know, does not mean law. Torah does not mean law. It means instructions. And it comes from the word Yara. Yara. It comes from the word Yara. It means to shoot, okay, or to fire at something with the intention of hitting the target. This is why uh, chata or sin means missing the mark, okay, means missing the mark. From yara, we get the word Torah. Okay, we get the word Torah. And we also uh, get, uh, get the word uh, for someone who instructs, which is a more. More or a mora. More or a mora. More or a mora. Okay? So, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, hubbub going about uh, with the word uh, Torah and what it means. And it depends on where your theology is, is uh, driving you to. But at any rate, uh, let's read through. And then we'll follow back with a slow uh, reading. Well, let's just do the slow and deliberate reading right away. That's what it's all about anyway, yeah? So here we go. Torat, Torat, Torat Adonai, Torat Yehovah, Timima, Timima, Torat, Torat Adonai, Timima, Timima. Meshivat, Meshivat, three syllables, Meshivat, Nafish, Aidut, A, A, Dut, Aidut, Adonai, Ne mana, Ne e mana, Ne e mana. Ne'emana. Mahkimat. Mahkimat. Three syllables. Mahkimat. Mahkimat. Peti. 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 Pikude. 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 Adonai. Yesharim. Looks like Israel, right? Yesharim. Pikude. Pikude Adonai. 
ישרים, ישרים. מסמחי לב. מסמחי, מסמחי לב. מצוות, 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 אדוני. ברא, ברא, ברא. מאירת, מאירת עיניים. מאירת עיניים. Let's come down a little bit here. So we can pick up the last uh, couple of verses. Yirat, 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 Yirat Adonai, Tehora, three syllables, Tehora, Tehora, Yirat, Yirat Adonai, Tehora. Oh, medet. Oh, medet. Oh, medet. Oh, medet. La ad. La ad. La ad. Oh, medet. La ad. Oh, medet. La ad. Mish pete. Mish pe te. Three syllables. Mishpete, Mishpete Adonai, Emet, Emet. It's true, Emet. Tzad Ku, Tzad, first syllable, Tzad Ku. Together, Tzad Ku. Tzad Ku, Yahdav, Yah, Yahdav. Sadku Yahdav. Here's a fun one. Ha Nehemadim. Ha Nehemadim. Ha Nehemadim. Don't fall for the Muhammad trap here. <laughs> wink, wink. Ha Nehemadim. Mi Zahav. Mi Zahav. Mi Zahav. Umi Paz. Umi Paz. U. Mi paz. Rav. Rav. Resh in a vet with an aval. Rav. Umetukim. U metukim. U metukim mi devash. Venofet. Tsufim. Tsufim. So let's go back to. The top. So, compound phrases. Compound phrases. I'm going to highlight them all. So, we have the first one, and remember they're called smichut. Smichut. So, a smichut are two words that are joined together. Torah, as you know, typically ends with a he. But with the tav at the end, it's letting you know that it's connected to the next word. It's called a smichut. A smichut is where we get the word samchut, which means covering, or somech. Somech, okay? So samchut, or smichut, is what these two words, when they're formed together, it's a construct. So torat Adonai. The instructions of Adonai, what are they? Or how are they being described by David HaMelech? Tmima, 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 Torat Adonai Tmima. If you ask a modern Arabic speaker how they are, you know, Salamu Alaikum, Kif Halak or Kifak, how are you? He might respond, Tamam, Tamam, Kulshi Tamam, everything is Tamam. It's from the same word. Tamima means faultless. It's without fault. It's flawless, right? It's flawless. So the instructions of the Most High are perfect or flawless. It's a synonym for perfect, but it's more like faultless or flawless. Lelo dofi. And what does the instructions of the Most High do? 
Meshivat Nafesh. So in orange, you see what you see what is being applied. In this case, what's being applied is the instructions of the Most High. And then what do they do? Okay, this is what they are. They are pure, or they are flawless. And what do they do? Me shivat nafesh. Nafesh means soul. Nafesh means soul. Nefesh, nafesh. And shev, the root of this word here, means to bring back around. Okay, to restore. Okay, it brings the soul back. The weary soul, the sinful soul, the wayward soul, the errant soul. So, the instructions of the Most High are flawless or without fault, and they regenerate or restore the soul. Aidut, Adonai, Aidut. And yes, once again, there is a smichut. Two words that go together. Aed, spelled with an ayin and a dalet, means testimony. Aidut means testimonies. So, Aidut Adonai, the testimonies of the Most High, of Yehovah, of Shema or Hashem, what are they? Ne'emana. 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 They are faithful. They are steadfast. They are unchanging. They can be relied upon. Remember when the children of Israel uh, were crossing Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds, and uh, Moshe, not, no, that wasn't the instance. It was when they were fighting a battle shortly after having crossed over. And as long as Moshe's arms stayed up, the children of Israel would prevail in the battle. But he would get tired, right? He's an old guy. So Yehoshua and Kalev came side by side and they held his arms up. And the Torah says that the arms of Moshe were Ne'emana. This is where we get our word for faith. This is where we get the word Amen from. Amen. Ne'emana. So the testimonies of the Most High are steadfast. They are faithful. What do they do? Mahkimat. Mahkimat. Mahkimat peti. The root word of this here is the khaf, or the chet rather, sorry. The het, the kaf, and the mem. Hakam, wise. So mahkimat peti. They make wise the simple. The testimonies of the Most High make wise the simple. Again, orange is the cause. Yellow is the effect. Yellow is the effect. Yellow is the effect. What's next? Pikude. Pikude Adonai. Pikude. The precepts or the orders in modern Hebrew. Pikude. The precepts. Of the Most High, Yesharim. Yesharim. So here we have another smichut. So the precepts of the Most High are Yesharim. Looks like Israel, right? Israel because it's from the same root. Yashar. Yashar, Yashar El. Or Sar is also there too, which means prince or to rule, right? Prince or to rule. So the precepts of the Most High are straight. They are right. They are upright. They are straight, right? Cause is the precepts. What is the effect of the precepts of the Most High? Mesam Lev. Mesam Lev. So if you look at the word Mesam the root there is the Samech, the Mem, and the Head. Sameach, Samach, okay, which means to be glad or joyful, right? Samachti be'omrimli, I rejoiced when they said to me, right? Let us go into the house of the Most High. Mesamhe lev, lev, so it gladdens the heart. They gladden the heart. The precepts of the Most High gladden the heart, okay? Uh, next, we have the smichut, mitzvat Yehovah. Or misvat Adonai, the commandments of the Most High. What are they? How are they being described? Bara. Bara. They are pure. 
Not to be confused with Aramaic. Now, remember, in Aramaic, bar means son. Son, bar. But in Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, bar means pure. Pure, okay? So, the commandments of the Most High, mitzvat Adonai, bara, they are pure. And what is the effect? What is the effect? Me'irat Ainaim. Me'irat Ainaim. So the root here for the word Me'irat is or. It's the Aleph and the Resh. Okay? It comes from the older Aramaic word Nehora, which means light. Or if you've ever heard of the uh, princess, uh, the female monarch, uh, queen of Jordan. Her name is Noor. Noor, right? In Arabic, uh, someone says to you, Sabah al khair morning of uh, of goodness. You say to them, Sabah al nur you know, morning of the light. Okay, or if you know someone named Nir or 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 Ori, you get it, Orit. So, again, cause and effect. The commandments of the Most High are pure. And what do they do? They Lighten or enlighten the eyes. We're almost done. We're almost done. And here we are. Finally, we have Yirat. We have Yirat Adonai. Yirat Adonai. Yirat, the fear of the Most High. Yirat Adonai Tehora Tehora is pure. The fear or the reverence of the Most High. It is pure. Remember uh, also a reference. David, King David said, Lev Tahor, a pure heart, Bra Bi. Okay? Rebuild in me or regenerate in me or fill out in me. Okay? Ruach Nachon, Hadesh Bekirbi, and a right spirit renew in me. So the fear of the Most High is pure. And what does it do? What is the effect of the fear of the Most High? Well, not in this case necessarily the effect. Well, yeah, it is an effect. But this is an emphatic statement about it. Omedet. Omedet, it stands. Omedet, how long? La'ad. La'ad, for eternity, such as in the Isaiah verse of uh, the child that would be born, would be called Peleyoetz, uh, Peleyoetz, uh, Avi Ad, 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 La'ad, forever. So it stands forever. Amad is the word for stand. Amud is the word for a pillar or something that is in perpetuity. So the fear of the Most High, the reverential fear of the Most High, stands forever. Finally, Finally, almost, Mishpete Adonai, our final smichut. Mishpete Adonai. Hey, where'd it go? There it is. Mishpete. Mishpete Adonai, the judgments of the Most High. The judgments of the Most High. Mishpete. Okay, sounds like Yeho Shafat. Shafat. Okay, the judgments of the Most High are true. Amen. Amen. Emet. They are true. The Hebrew word for true or truth is emet. Emet. Cause and effect or statement, emphatic statement. Mishpete Adonai emet tzadiku. Tzadiku. Tzadiku yahdav are righteous all together. And to take it home, what a sweet topping to this sweet treat. The way he ends it in verse 11 here, remember? Yod, 10, plus the Aleph is 11. Yod is 10 by itself, and the Ted is 9. So he says, to take it home, Hanehemadim, Hanehemadim. Plural, because he's speaking of all of these things together, all of these smichuts. So he's speaking of the instructions of the Most High, Torat Adonai, Edut Adonai, the testimonies of the Most High, Pikudei Adonai, the precepts of the Most High, 
מצוות אדוני, the commandments of the Most High, יראת אדוני, the reverential fear of the Most High, משפטי אדוני, the judgments of the Most High. All of these things, he says, הנחמדים, they are desirable, comely, beautiful, or attractive. I made the little Muhammad reference because, again, this is a sleight of hand by Islam to make an attempt to say that the name of their messenger is in the Hebrew Bible. His name does come from this word, Hamad, Hamad, but it means comely, beautiful, tra- attractive, or desirable in Hebrew. In Aramaic and in Arabic, it means blessed one because comely, attractive, X, Y, Z. But no, uh, let's not drink the Kool-Aid and allow anybody else to do so either. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear. Hanehemadim, they are all more desirable and attractive from what or than what? Mi zahav. Mi zahav. So from gold or than gold, more attractive and more desirable than gold. Okay, gold. The gold that you get, you know, any old gold is ex- is good, it's expensive, it's valuable, right? He goes a little bit further. U mi paz. Paz is fine gold. It's that fine gold. It's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's good, fine gold. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit more bling to it. Umipaz rav. There's your adjective, much. Umipaz rav and much fine gold. So they are all more attractive and more desirable than gold and from fine gold. And finally, it's almost dinner time. He says, Umetukim midvash venofet sufim. Umetukim, and sweeter they are. Matok is the Hebrew word for sweet, matok. And sweeter they are. They, all of these things are sweeter. Midavash. Dvash is honey. Dvash. Umetukim midvash, and sweeter, they are sweeter than honey. Then no fet. And here's our final smichut. No fet. Nofet, modern Hebrew word for an oil or drippings, is neft. The nofet and the drippings, sufim, of the comb. They are sweeter, more desirable, and more comely than gold, even fine gold, and they are sweeter than honey and the drippings mm, 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 from the comb. Okay, that's it. Once again, I hope uh, this has been a blessing to you. James, or we know the brother of Yeshua, his name was Yaakov. James chapter 1 verse 25 talks about the perfect law of liberty. It can be paralleled in Psalm 119 verse 45. Now you know that the writer, Yaakov, the brother of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Melech HaMashiach, HaMashiach Adon, was speaking of the Torah of the Most High. Um, yeah, you know, not something that he would just uh, throw away for naught and throw to the side after uh, establishing something that teaches us how to live, uh, what to eat, what not to eat, how to dress, how to behave ourselves, how to speak, how to keep our minds focused and stayed on him. So with that, uh, again, That's it, and I'm done. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And I will leave you, as always, with the Aaronic benediction. May the Most High watch over you and bless you. May the Most High cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Most High lift His face upon you and give you His shalom. Because when we have uh, his shalom, we are not lacking anything. We are shalem. We are complete. Um, And when we have him, we have need of nothing else. Um, I look forward to seeing you all, seeing, seeing you guys all again real soon uh, with a upcoming video about Haporetz, the king, Hamelech Shaporetz et Agader Lasot Loderech, the king who breached open the way. Uh, to make for himself, breached open the wall to make for himself um, a way. It's going to be a nice little journey through scripture uh, visually and quickly. Okay, I look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, Take care of yourselves and uh, I'll see you soon.